A warm welcome to all of you. On behalf of Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia, I'm Malarvili Balakrishnan, welcoming all of you to another series of distinguished lecture series. It is believed that the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed a number of weakness in the world's healthcare systems and in the uh, general global economy. Engineers and computer scientists argue that the current pandemic moment ought to serve a wake up call for society and the public health community to embrace the opportunities in computer engineering. Together with us here today is a dear friend of mine, Professor Hamid Hassanfur from Sharul University of Technology, Iran. And the title of his lecture today is COVID-19 and Opportunities for Computer Engineers. Let me now leave the floor to the Dean of Faculty of Engineering, Professor Rafiq Abdul Qadir, to welcome our professor. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Mala. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. And welcome to UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series, our fifth lecture in the series. My name is Muhammad Rafiq and I am the Dean of Engineering University Technology Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Prof. Hamid Hassanpour to our program. Hamid Hassanpour received his PhD from the Queensland University of Technology, Australia. He is currently a full professor at the Faculty of Computer Engineering, Sharud University of Technology, Iran. His research interests include image processing, signal processing, and data mining. He has published over 200 journals and conference papers. He is currently the Editor-in-Chief for Journal of Artificial Intelligence and Data Mining. So without further ado, I call upon Prof. Hamid Hassanpour for his lecture. Over to you, Prof. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Professor Rafiq, for introducing me. And also, thank you to Associate Professor Malakili for inviting me to the webinar. Uh, the topic that I want to talk to you is about COVID 19 and opportunities for computer engineering. Phrase, you know that recent years job opportunities have been grown in the field of computer engineers. And many people wish to have a degree in computer engineering and also, of course, in some other engineers. And the development of our society is heavily based to technology, especially in the area of artificial intelligence. And you know that. We are affected from the coronavirus nowadays. And the coronavirus, on the other hand, creates a large market of computer engineers and especially artificial intelligence and benefit. And uh, computer scientists and engineers can play an important role in dealing with the pandemic situation that we have nowadays. But we are required to improve the knowledge, to develop new techniques and solutions for dealing with the needs that we have in such situation. Now, talk about the impact of computer technology in our society. You can see that there are many nations that even in our, in our kitchen, we have, we may have no microphone using the computer systems, hardware, software, electrical, and mechanical, and other systems are all working together. I'm saying that uh, many people are using computing in their daily life, but back in 1990s and earlier, only professional computer engineers could compete, uh, I mean, could, uh, work with computer and do programming. Now, Many people can deal with the computer, can use computer. 
and many engineers and people can build a working with computer system more than ever before. And people, now the computer engineers should be aware that people may not need uh, assistance, may only need assistance from professionals for setting up, uh, say, a different connection or getting some software to install to your computer or having remotely access to a file in the office. So uh, you can say that many people are easily uh, familiar with the use of computer, but engineers in computer programming may not be enough for our future need. We need to be with this other skill to develop many application software for different business that we talked about. Now, let me talk about what top carrier tools in demand. Of course, for, for those which have a university degree like Bachelor of Science or Math Science. So the top carrier things include computer engineers, financial services education and medical fields like nurse and physician. The computer engineer is the number one field in terms of expected job growth for the next step. So this may be responsibility for computer engineers to satisfy the future demand of society. And the skill of computer engineer span a wide range developing software system, network protocol settings, and designing micro, microprocessor, or setting up microprocessor for system, designing robots, and also security and uh, cryptography system. And so there are different, as you can see, there are different skills in the field of computer engineering, and also, um, Field in computer engineering can be subdivided in four categories, including digital computer science, digital data structure and integration, project computation, information coding, and the other field computer system in so different categories, and also software engineering, and the other field is computer application. So say for example, working on computer graphics and visualization, computer human interaction, artificial intelligence. But now, the first three uh, categories are well developed. I'm not saying that they reach the end. I'm saying that they well developed to satisfy the needs, uh, of daily needs. But computer engineer needs more development in the application area. And here I will talk about I demanding certain computer engineering skills which include back end developer, computer system administrator, database administrator, software developer, and web These are the high demanding skills. And let me talk about the computer technology and it's to take on pandemic situation. If for the pandemic situation, Computer technology is perceived as a tool for social progress and provide more comfort to our uh, lifestyle. But this has been changed at the rise of the pandemic. For example, this all uh, this almost all public places closed, uh, locked down in the, the pandemic situation. Many uh, people using social networks, or using video games once they were isolated at home. Uh, so you can see that computer engineering application can be very helpful. And even without the application software, even academic institutes and companies would be suspended if uh, application software like video streaming would not be available. Now I have a webinar using the in New York. So all of you, some of you maybe stay at home or in your office and you are using the webinar. 
And many application software are highly required for keeping humans safe in pandemic situations. And here, let me talk about the opportunity that COVID-19 is provide us in computer and do. The opportunity to have more business in online teaching software, video conferencing software, social networks, online shopping, computer games, and many more. So these application software are already available, but they have more, more users now. And also there was an opportunity for new application software, for example, providing simulation for COVID-19 dissemination or tracking um, dissemination of COVID-19 in social networks. And also many more uh, applications that you know, are required and scientists are working on those areas. For example, um, using computer systems to assist the physician to analyze chest X-ray image. So as you, 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 you might be aware, the first symptom uh, once someone was infected by coronavirus is infected on the chest. So X-ray imaging could be very helpful to early diagnosis. A further, further development is um, required in some other area, for example, using um, robots for patient hearing. So in this case, people are isolated and so if someone is uh, infected by a virus, not, it might be very dangerous for nurse or patient to work with the patient. So in this case, robot system would be very helpful for patient hearing. Or also people may stay at home and since many restaurants were closed, so everybody needs cooking, so robots can be very useful for cooking purposes, even for self-driving. And the other area of the automatic rubbish collection, so in this case, one of the dangerous jobs should be, would be uh, rubbish collection, so automatic rubbish collection. And also, some business are closed, some people may have problems, may need assistance, so automatic Analyzing system to be very helpful. For another area, let me say that if some, if, if the case of pandemic, it would be uh, very dangerous if you want to use a cooking room in shopping. So uh, it, it would be very useful if you can develop a simulator for cooking room, so then people not need to test. Those people buying. And also, the other area would be lab simulator and many more other areas, for example, remote video examination. So, now one of the problems for many universities now is remote video examination. How to ensure that the other person is doing examination and the other side is the right person. So, as I said, we need more development in many areas to have our normal life. And also, you know, of course, uh, IoT can be very helpful in these cases. But we can say that computer engineers could not produce enough technical talent to fill the retirement job during the pandemic. So we can see that in my previous slide. We had many requirements, but most of them were not available for, for most of us. So in this case, we can say that Computing could not provide enough technical talent for the time. And so the policymaker decided to uh, social distancing intervention. So it's social distancing intervention and the organic society in terms of economic development and also mental issues. So this is not an easy decision for the social distancing intervention. Uh, Many, many problems we have arising from this decision. We'll talk about that later. Now, let's see what's the struggle with computer technology. Uh, we can say that 
computer, describing computer technology of people, first time computer, which is hosting the speed, memory, communication, and the security. What are our solutions for these struggles that take in college processing and working design, take in cloud computing and advanced and operating system design? So these techniques are built the look for the struggle in computer level. But the other side of the struggles are the technical level. In dealing with application, but not only the technical knowledge to deal with uh, application for so scientists, visual computers, and it needs more application knowledge. So if they want to develop it, uh, Application software, they need to have enough knowledge from the application. How they can have enough knowledge from different applications? But there are some techniques, there are solutions for this. Solution is using data clustering, using new extraction, similarity, dissimilarity with your machine learning system, and also system modeling. Let me uh, talk more about these uh, solutions. And we have plenty of solutions to build this application uh, in different application purposes. But still, we need more development. Say, for example, uh, for the case of uh, coronavirus, we had several problems for the first few weeks. First of all, maybe the, the virus has not been recognized earlier. So one of the reasons that the virus was Spread very fast, but the, the virus was new to the scientists. And the other issue was that the new types of uh, virus from, from the family. So, in this, this case, the first uh, item that should be taken by, by a scientist to recognize the new virus is uh, to recognize the number of, uh, I mean, the number of different. I mean, the number of varieties that the virus may exist in the family. So, in this case, the clustering uh, technique can be very useful. The clustering technique can work on the data collected and then cluster them into similar groups. So, in this case, then the scientists can work on the, on the each cluster and to find. And the other problem that we had in the case of coronavirus, later uh, scientists could recognize that there's a new virus, but they were not aware that how to test different people to make sure that he or she has a, been infected by a virus. So after now, to uh, early recognition of the coronavirus, we need to have a laboratory test kit. So the laboratory test kits are uh, compound solution, but solution of each parameter. So in this case, many research needs to be done to develop laboratory test kits to test a new disease. In this case, we have a real extraction technique in artificial intelligence, computer engineering, that can help scientists to find, uh, I mean, to produce laboratory test kits. This is the same to produce new medicine for a for new business. First of all, they might be sure that the existing medicines uh, uh, to be effective or not, then this type of medicine will be effective. So in this case, they need to find uh, each parameters of solution, I mean, each compounds of a solution can be useful to make a laboratory test for, for a specific virus, and also each compound of medicine can be used to look after patients to, be, uh, to recover from the infection. Okay. And the other issue is the similarity and distance measure in this case. Uh, for manufacturing new vaccines, the vaccine, first of all, we need to be sure that um, how many variety of virus exist and what's the similarity between them and the similarity with others. In this case, uh, so the similarity and the similarity between uh, 
clients from the same family and to the other families of the other group can be very helpful to develop new vaccine. So in this case, similarity and dissimilarity usually can increase. So you can say that we have we have plenty of similarity or dissimilarity measures, plenty of real effects and techniques, plenty of data testing. But once a new situation happens like coronavirus, some of them will not work. So in this case, we need to develop each similarity measure or each real extraction is uh, uh, very you know each of them are very useful for, for specific for situation, not in all situations. So in this case, scientists need to be sure that the technique that we are using for, say, developing a new vaccine or developing a new laboratory uh, test is detected. And also, perhaps, we are aware that we have many techniques can be using, uh, that can be used for machine learning, and machine can be uh, learned to discriminate between healthy and sick people for some basis. And of course, uh, the other technique that can be used is system modeling. Say, for example, people want to uh, recognize how the virus is disseminated in society. So, in this case, simulation will be very helpful because if we can uh, estimate that the if the virus is spreading in one state or the other state or from the direction of the destination, then the policy maker can be ready for the new situation. So as you can see, there are many challenges in the technical. So as I said, the surrounding computer, we are twofold. The first is computer level and the other one was technical. Level. So the more Technical level is are more challenging. And just programming the skill is not enough to develop many application software to develop, I mean, to deal with the technical level is struggling computer engineering. So, uh, you may be the but you cannot develop a machine to write an application software, not even now. You possibly are aware that there are some uh, software that you can ask them to write a specific uh, program. But for each program, uh, each program is like a function. So the input and output of the function must be specified. Sometimes you are not sure that what is the input and what is the output. So this is one of the problems in developing application software. So you can see that the yeah, we can develop, as I said, we can uh, develop a technique to write a new program, but we cannot develop a machine to write an application software. So human beings should be involved in developing application software. But in challenge, um, this challenge that I thought, they require knowledge in math and probability. So if you want to deal with the challenge that we talked about before, you need to have good knowledge in math, in math and probability, with knowledge in signals and systems, knowledge in data mining skills. And of course, uh, these two subjects have recently been uh, including uh, computer engineering curriculum because of the importance of these subjects. Let me add some examples to uh, be sure that why we need some uh, such subject in computer engineering curriculum and why. The computer engineer you need to develop the knowledge you need to. Say, for example, you want uh, to develop an application software for eradication of COVID 19. So, suppose you want uh, to use uh, data from sound or top breathing pattern of people, and you want to detect early whether someone was infected by a virus or not. In this case, of course, you need a large set of data. Computation. So the first step is that how many number how many number of cases would be enough for this study? So in this case, I think the 10, 100, 1,000, 1 million. So the complex of the problem depends to the answer for deciding what the number of cases required for this study. And the other case is sampling frequency. So once the computer engineering 
intend to work in this area for early detection of COVID-19 and trying to uh, collect data the first issue setting the sampling frequency. So I, I'm trying to record copy pattern. So 100 samples per second is enough. 200 samples per second is enough. How many samples per second is like you are Once you are talking about using computer for processing the signal, signal must be discretized first, then the, for discretizing the signal, so how many samples per second should be enough for this processing? And of course, uh, sometimes you may uh, want the machine to learn to distinguish between um, healthy and infected people. Okay, in this case, we need to record demographic and medical history and from the users. Okay. In this case, the other issue is data representation. For the purpose that we are intend to develop the application software, how the data can be uh, represented so that we can easily track the infection device. And of course, once we collect the data, the data might be noisy, so we need to remove noise from data. And also, as I mentioned before, we need to data classes. So these are basic uh, essential techniques that we need to develop, be aware for developing application software for early infection of COVID-19. So there are struggles in this area, building sampling frequency and uh, also discretizing the signal, clustering with the data, and also filtering. So all these techniques of signal receipt system and also techniques in data mining. So as you say, there's a skilled program in this area. But another example, also geographic, uh, also that we want to develop an application software for geographic really traffic. This is the help of the policy make to be uh, to make, make themselves for a new, new situation of the pandemic, say, for example, for the infection. So, in this case, again, we have the same problem the data collection. So, uh, we need to have a policy for data sampling, for sampling treatments, and also each feature for each specification feature would be useful for early tracking the, the infection. And uh, of course, in case, tracking is a very interesting subject. I wish I could have another opportunity from the university in another time uh, to talk about people tracking and also particle tracking. So tracking has many applications in university, in social science, in social networking. So um, in another time, hopefully we'll talk about this subject. And uh, as another example, concept we want to develop social distance policy. Uh, I mean, set a social distance. So in this case, you are aware that the policymaker just uh, wants to, uh, to relax society from the infection. They make a policy that the uh, individual should have distance between one and a half two meters. But this is not the best choice. But as you are aware, the, the, the social distances may damage our society because many for some uh, business people may be in normal risk and not keep the social distance and the policy may tend to decide to close down the whole society. So uh, many to make a line decision about uh, setting the social distance policy the first issue is that distance setting depends on many parameters. So we cannot make policy for every business for every society. Here I wrote a statement that we need such an estimation model for individual businesses. In a business with 10 visitors per hour should be different this business with 100 visitors and how long the digital will stay in the place, and how many, and also of course, many more parameters involved in this okay. So, if we can uh, benefit from uh, simulation system, 
So we can simulate, we can involve many businesses in the simulation, then we can um, consider social distancing policy for individual businesses, for individual society, not just merely saying that you know, distancing if you want to have to and, and two meters for everybody in every society, in every business. So different societies distancing policy can be applied to population the statistics of different business sites. So we can develop the software, the simulation software, and in this topic software we can uh, get involved, I mean we can add some restriction for business or restriction for society, and then see how the restriction or removing the restriction can affect the progress rate of the falling rate of the disease of the pandemic situation. Uh, as another example, let's say uh, developing an application software for time series forecasting. Forecasting an application in many areas. Say you want to forecast the number of infections with COVID-19 and number of deaths. That is very important for the forecast. Forecast the number of active users for a software product to get on the website. Forecast the access to a resource for computer device or memory. So you can see that for the first time, for, I mean, for the first application that I mentioned here, possibly computing can say that this is not uh, our business, this is the business of others. But here in this case, we cannot expect from other engineers to work in this area. So the people in the engineer might be aware about development of this uh, application software. But not for the, for the uh, application software I mentioned here, for passing access to resource or computer device. So we cannot expect from other engineers to uh, forecast the resource uh, usage of the computer devices, for example, memory access to memory or access to a file. So in this case, you can say an increased job I mean science with capacity to the job of computer engineer. Uh, also uh, as I mentioned computer engineers would require uh, knowledge or more knowledge from math and from what can be mining knowledge in signal system. And I can say that signal system introduced techniques to simplify processing functional data and time series. So this knowledge would be very helpful to deal with the functional data. And sometimes simulated data, data may not be functional, but we can simulate and, and effectively signal the system and also digital digital signal processing can be helpful. And also data sampling and this education is another topic that we discuss in signal system. So as a conclusion, you can see that COVID-19 provides a good opportunity for uh, our society to expect to expedite the automation and employ robotics in our daily life. So if we employ more robotics in our daily life, possibly we might have a more easy life in future pandemic. Hopefully not such a pandemic in future and it will be the last one. The computer engineer had a uh, considerable impact on life quality during the pandemic situation. So I have some examples here. But let me say that the life expectancy of computer engineer is not important. So computer engineer might be very uh, active, might be up to date in the field so that Every time people may, may require uh, application software for new, for, for new area, for new applications, or new application software, sometimes existing technology may not work properly. So, in this case, computer engineering might be uh, up to date. And uh, we can see that engineering competition is going to exempt from a, a COVID 19 job follow. Hopefully, the effect will be temporarily. And more engineers will be needed than before in the world return to the semblance of normal because we need more automation, more robotics, and more uh, augmented reality 
and also more uh, product in different application areas, so more engineering in different uh, in, in the future. Um, without, uh, without they had enough scientific and medical product, and the situation keeps us that how product was not enough. Many countries, many sites have problems in under the situation. So, as to create more simulation of what seems like this virus can do to population, you can engineer more product in anticipation of needs. And lastly, I would like to have a statement from Holly Foran saying that in Namal Osre Yusra, translated in English, saying that for indeed. This hardship will be eased, saying that if the patients in a situation like COVID-19, hopefully there are many benefits following their hardship. So hopefully we will have better life in the near, near future. That's the promise of God in the Holy Quran. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your attention and thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hamid. Thank you very much for the presentation. However, we face some technical problem. And for that, we are terribly sorry to all the viewers for the poor quality of the um, audio. So, Prof. Hamid, uh, we, we, have, we are having this technical issue where your voice was fragmented, it was lagging and it was not clear. So our technical team here is suggesting if you can get, um, if, if do you have your headset with you, uh, that might be very helpful in order for us to continue um, the question and answer session and maybe we can, uh, you know, uh, have a smooth program. Do, 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 do you think you can uh, help us with uh, that issue? Uh, yeah, but no, now if your voice yeah, very noisy. I cannot. I could not recognize all of them. Just so I could recognize that you're saying that the presentation had problem because of the noise voice, and possibly the problem was the internet bandwidth or some other issue. But you know, it's up to you. So any decision, if you want to have some it's, questions, it's so much, we'll be happy it's to so answer. It's so much better now. It's so much better now. We we could follow your slides. It was very clear. You know the highlights of the job opportunities yeah. and the you know the new research areas it, it is clear just the voice uh, the audio was a bit poor but uh, we could follow the slides very well but now it seems clear and uh, therefore i think we could continue with um, some uh, questions um the yeah. first question, the first question. Uh, yeah. yeah thank you Yes, yes. It's Dr. Anazida. So about the first question. Yes. What are the challenges to obtain precise forecasting in the case of COVID-19? To you, Prof. Hamid. Okay. Okay. Because there are uh, many parameters involved in this forecasting. Sometimes people for forecasting in a, in a uh, in a you know, time series, there are different techniques. One of them is just looking after the behavior of the time series in the, in, in the past, but this is not enough for many cases because some other factor may, may affect the future behavior. Say, for example, for uh, setting the social distance policy or sometimes possibly the, uh, the policymaker may remove some of the uh, policies say, for example, they want to keep uh, business and want to keep, uh, to, to remove the social distancing. So these cases are effective, the forecasting issue for the uh, case of COVID-19. So these are the main reason for not proper, properly uh, forecasting the COVID-19, yes. Okay, I hope uh, that, 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 that forecasting part is clear to most of us. 
but uh, to be um, exact, do we have like any statistics or uh, opportunities for computer engineering in in throughout the world or maybe in Iran? Do you, do you have any information? Yes, we, we have this. Uh, if, if I could recognize your question well, because now it was disrupted by noises. Uh, if you are saying that we have any um, uh, statistics from Iran, yes, now it's, it's getting better now. Uh, so, and social distancing policy, it's getting uh, released uh, little by little. Uh, so, Hopefully the situation would be better, but you know it, it take it may take long time to overcome the situation. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, how about if let me disconnect the system? I mean the Ethernet system and reconnect it. Sometimes it can help to recover the bandwidth. It's, it's, we are still in the show and, and we could hear you better now compared to uh, presentation. So we have one more question from uh, Prof. Nur Hazila Matno. How quantum computer can play a role to combat this pandemic? Okay, we are facing some problem here. <laughs> okay. So it looks like uh, we got uh, disconnected. It's uh, towards the end of the show and uh, we got uh, disconnected. Quantum computer. You know, the moment that quantum computer question raised, uh, it was disconnected. So um, today we had Prof. Hamid um, Hassanpur from Iran. Um, with his insightful lecture and highlights for the future prospects of computer engineering. And he highlighted a few issues uh, for new uh, diagnostic systems for COVID-19, the forecasting, like the prediction and using the computer, in, computer engineering skills. And uh, he also mentioned about AI, the artificial engineering, because you know, if you are someone who's working in regards to the systems, design, software engineer, or even some uh, hardware configuration, I think the future is really looking out for you. And this is definitely a good news for those who wish to further studies in the field of computer engineering. So um, are we still in the show? Um, are we still going to get Dr. Uh, Professor Hamid back? It's still a big question mark. Let's give him one or two minutes because it's, it's almost the end. Uh, the end. If there is any more question from the floor, anyone wish to raise any questions? Maybe we can have a look. Okay, if uh, there's no more further questions, again, I would like to um, Thank everyone for joining our distinguished lecture series. Uh, this time we had Professor Hamid Asanpur from Iran with the title COVID-19 and Opportunities for Computer Engineers. And he, have, he has highlighted very important points in the future prospects yes. Yes. for computer engineers. Oh, he's back. Yes. Can we... Um, uh, we have another question for you, uh, Prof. Hamid, by Ariana Nagoka. What changes should we make to the math and probability knowledge? To you, Prof. Yeah, so what you could, the question is, what changes should be made to the math and probability knowledge? There's no need to change the knowledge in math and probability, but we as a computer engineer need to improve our knowledge in math and, and also probability. And sometimes you know, the, we have no in math and probability well developed and we are not aware how they, we can use them in a specific application or which technique can be used in a specific 
application. So the problem is sometimes the, the discretizing or providing an algorithm for the function for the equation that exists in a math or in probability. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay, that was clear. Okay, we, we no need to alter any syllabus, but uh, we need to uh, improvise ourselves. And the next question is uh, by uh, Pazir Ahmad. Does COVID-19 create a new type of job opportunity in the IT, mar IT market after the pandemic? This is the future of yeah, IT. In, uh, yeah, in my point of Yes, in my point of view, yeah, definitely would be new job opportunity in IT market. So I had a few examples in my presentations. So definitely would be new opportunity for IT market. Yes, it's a huge whole lot of opportunity waiting for computer engineers and uh, IT uh, people dealing with IT. So I think we can uh, put up with um, Prof. Yes. Hazilan question once again. That was a very interesting question. Yes, here it is. How quantum computer can play a role to combat pandemic? Over to you, Prof. Yeah, so as I said, uh, yeah, as, the, as I said in my presentation, the struggles in computer engineering are twofold. The first one is computer uh, processing or the processing level, and the other one is the technical or the uh, application level. So in the processing level, we, we are have good progress like using quantum computer and some other techniques. So for the processing level, we have good progress. As I said in my presentation, I'm not saying that we, it reached the end, but it has good progress for our daily needs in using the computer. But the main problem is providing a technical knowledge in application um, point of view. So we have some solution like using uh, clustering technique, using uh, some other techniques in data mining, in, in techniques in signal processing, techniques in signal and six systems. So they can be very helpful to have a better life in near, near, near future. So to provide automation, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, I hope uh, many have heard that answer clearly. It, it is very clear. The audio is very clear now. That was a good question. And uh, next, we have from uh, Ms. Shahida Sulaiman. As more apps are developed specifically in tracking citizens during this pandemic period, this leads to more data privacy issues. What's your opinion on this aspect, Prof? Yeah, that's that's yeah. correct. You know, there is a problem for the uh, security issue, for the private security issue. But once we are saying, say, say we have a uh, elder people in in a house, so if you are worried about them, we have to use you know, uh, like a, a tracking system to make sure that they are healthy, they 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 they, they don't have any emergency situation. But there are some other techniques, so uh, like not using. Uh, especially in a video camera, there are some other techniques like uh, switching uh, point or switching uh, on or off switching uh, tools that can be used for uh, a smart home. Okay, in this case, they do not uh, in the disturb any privacy issue. But if uh, she is talking about you now private issue in public area. So in public area, there is uh, the, 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 the important is that the policymaker for the uh, for using the say network camera in public area should be aware that the data should not be available for public usage just for uh, scientific usage or for making any policy to make sure that how uh, people may be involved in a pandemic situation or how the, the, the virus may be spread in society from one place to another places. Yeah, there are still many issues in terms of privacy that need to be to be done in future. Thank you. Uh, and uh, talking about the apps, in, in Malaysia, we have uh, what we call as My Sejahtera. 
And do you have a similar app uh, in uh, Iran? Can we know um, the name so that you know we know what's happening over there since this is a sharing session? Uh, you know, we, we, we have, uh, if you are talking about similar application software in Iran, no, we don't have similar application software from Iran. Oh. Or if there is, I'm not aware about that. Oh, I see. Just okay. we are using the, some other, uh, you know, so some of application software, now the resources are fairly available. So, I mean, uh, engineer here in Iran tried to develop them a little bit. And install for public for now public usage mm -hmm. inside the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So uh, even though uh, we know we heard over the news and the you know newspapers and uh, videos that uh, you know Iran faced uh, quite a huge amount of uh, loss during the pandemic, but you have not you do not have such uh, app in order to track. I really could not get what you, what you said. The, the voice was noisy. Sorry. <laughs> now I was just saying that you know, uh, even uh, you know, it, we, we know that Iran faced quite a number of uh, losses. Now, for the other question that you, you, I could uh, see the, the writing. I could see the writing. So sometimes the voice is noisy, but from the writing, I could see and answer the question. But you know, oh, in this case, okay. Really, okay. the voice was uh, noisy. Okay, so okay, okay. Have, uh, again now. That's okay, Prof. That's okay. You know, I was just trying to wrap up. That's all. So it was a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, thank you very much, Professor Hamid Hassan Poor, for an insightful lecture for the highlights and the future prospects for computer engineers. I must admit that, you know, throughout our talk, we had some lagging and voice fragmentation problem. And so to the viewers, we are very, very, very sorry. We will try to improve ourselves in near future. And to the computer engineers, this is definitely good news for you, for those who wish to further studies in the field of computer engineering. Uh, thanks to all the viewers for joining our flagship webinar this afternoon. Remember, this is just one of the many more coming lecture series by prominent professors around the world throughout the year 2020. So stay tuned with us. Please share, like, comment our Facebook page. See you again in another series. Till then, stay safe. Thank you. And I'm passing this to Professor Rafi, the Dean of Faculty Engineer. Oh, uh, thank you, Malar. Thank you. Uh, and to Prof. Hamid Hassanpour, our deepest gratitude to you for sharing your knowledge with all of us. Thank you yeah. so very much. And to all of you watching this program throughout the globe, we do apologize for the quality yeah. of the audio during the lecture. The IT team already did their best to inform Prof. Hamid during the lecture. But I guess it's not easy to interrupt a lecture that is currently happening thousands of miles away from Malaysia. Anyway, I'm sure we will find a way to sort this out before our next lecture on Monday. Uh, so uh, don't forget to uh, like our Facebook. Uh, we have many more lectures uh, in, the, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, thank you again to Prof. Hamid Hassanpour. Thank you to all of you watching this uh, Distinguished Lecture Series. I'll see you in our next episode of UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. Bye for now.